After 1983, Star Wars started to fade in the memory, and as kids grew up, Star Wars was seen more as that fad of hit movies from their childhood. By the end of the 80s, little Star Wars could be found outside of a TV screen. Going to toy stores, department stores, or even bookstores to find something Star Wars was near impossible. But as the kids of the 80s become young adults, the market for Star Wars slowly started to return. The big sea change came in 1991 with the release of the first official Star Wars novel in almost 10 years, called Heir to the Empire. The book was shoot to the top of the bestsellers list, showing that there was still a market of some kind for Star Wars. The novel wasn't released just to make a quick buck. George Lucas, after seeing the effects done for movies like Terminator 2 and The Abyss, felt it might be time to return to Star Wars, as now movie technology could allow him to make the movies that he always wanted to make. So in the early 90s, Lucasfilm tested the waters for Star Wars. Not only with the release of a Star Wars sequel novel, but a comic book series by Dark Horse Comics called Dark Empire. The comics and novel was a huge hit, but was mostly being bought up by young adult Star Wars fans. Would kids who were not even born when Star Wars was released buy Star Wars stuff? To test that water, Lucasfilm reached a deal with Galoob Toys for a line of small, micro Star Wars toys for 1993. Also, a line of rubber figures was released that same year. Both sold well and showed Lucasfilm that there were still old and young fans of Star Wars out there. Lucasfilm would then reach out to bigger brand deals like Hasbro for a 1995 action figure line. However, for a lot of Star Wars fans, they were ready to see Star Wars and not just in a toy form or in a novel. They wanted to see characters back in action. So in the summer of 1995, when the trailer and TV spots for Indiana the Cover was released, Star Wars fans went crazy. The movie was about a kid with a magic cupboard that could bring toys to life. Both the TV spots and trailers would show what happens when the kid put in a Star Wars figure. And that figure was Darth Vader, who would come alive and doing so would break the internet. Star Wars fan David Stuckey would be one of the first to catch the trailer of the Frank Oz film and post about it online, saying, Last night, when I went to see Braveheart, a preview for Frank Oz's Indian in the Carpet was shown a live action clip of Darth. However, once the trailer and TV spot started to be shown more places, others were posted with more details. Like Gary Ginn wrote, Has anyone else seen Darth Vader in the preview for Make the Toys Come Alive movie, Indian in the Carpet? I was talking and looked up and saw Darth Vader, 8 inch tall, swinging that old pink lightsaber. The kid was then worried about the Indian and the cowboy. I'd be a little bit more worried about a mini dark master myself, size matters not, and all that. Anyway, just a little funny cameo thing to look for. Stephen Lambell made it clear that he did see Darth Vader in the preview, but he wasn't planning on seeing the movie when he posted, I have a small preview on TV of Indian and the Curbert, a movie from Paramount. I'm not interested in the least in this movie. But suddenly they showed a lot of small characters fighting on the table on the floor, and then you look into a box and spot Darth Vader in full movement swinging the lightsaber at what I think was a dinosaur. Soon toy collectors were asking, what would you put in your magic cupboard? Random1449 said he would put in Star Trek's Rolaren, Mego Supergirl, and a couple of Transformers to watch him transform. James Bosch posted that he wished he had a Dean Cain and Mel Gibson to put in his cupboard. But what was in this magic cupboard besides an Indian and a Darth Vader? Well, the weird looking kid could put Ram Man from Master of the Universe in his cupboard. That could have been a real fun scene. But what did he go with? He went with a dinosaur who looks very close to the Hasbro Jurassic Park T-Rex. There was also a generic army man that's not a G.I. Joe. Two figures from Star Trek, a Ferengi and a Cardassian. And then there was a Robocop figure. Maybe for legal reasons, it seems the real toys were not used, as the Ferengi and Kardashian seems different than the Playmate figures that were in stores at the time. And that Darth Vader doesn't look anything like the Hasbro 1995 toy, which most likely wasn't even made when filming of this movie. And it sure, without a doubt, isn't a Kenner Darth Vader. Users on the internet did say they saw Indiana Jones. I admit I've never seen this film, but I watched this clip over and over while making this video, and I could find no Indiana Jones. This was 1995, when most people couldn't watch the scene over and over again, and just had to go by what they quickly saw in the trailer or the TV spot. I believe what many thought was Indiana Jones was the would-be G.I. Joe toy that was using a whip-like string to climb down inside the cupboard. Fans were excited to see Darth Vader back in action, even if it was a few seconds, and the internet was buzzing about it. But just a year before, in September of 1994, the Star Wars fan base online 
had already gone crazy seeing Darth Vader back in live action form the first time since 1983. This time, Darth Vader was fighting an energetic bunny, but we'll save that for part two of when Star Wars broke the internet. Hey, Jumpman <laughs> channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs> <laughs> 